Hi everyone, uh, welcome to my 23 week pregnancy vlog. I am back in Los Angeles, dee dee dee, here's my belly, boop boop boop. Um, look how big it is. Oh, it's so good, like I'm, I'm wearing all the clothes um, that I forgot about, that I had. You go, you get home, I'm like, oh my God, I had this really cool top and these hippie flowy pants and perfect, this is exactly the outfit I wanna wear to unpack, to listen to some podcasts. Um, this top is just a really, it's actually one of my favorite brands called Doen, but I love it that it's a little belly top so I can show off my belly. And then I've got these wicked hippy dippy pants that I got from my favorite Australian designer, Honor Apparel. So thanks guys, not that they're watching, but anyway, thanks. Um, <clears throat> it's 6 a.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have been up since 3 because I'm really jet lagged. Um, but it was actually quite a good sleep. I slept from 8. We got back yesterday. I slept from 8 p.m. to th oh, 3.50 actually. 3.50. 3.50? Yeah, 3.50. Um, so I had a really good amount of sleep and the kids woke up. The boys woke up once. They came upstairs to our room because um, we were on this floor. And look at all the junk I have to unpack. Um, and Poet sleeps in this room with us. And then below us is the boys' room, which is like basically a pool room that we have in our house that we turned into this like indoor playground and like kids' bedroom. So that is... It sounds like it's really massive, but it's not. It's really cramped in there. Like the the whole room is just basically this like eco playground that we got, um, like a wooden playground. And there's a part of me that just doesn't, I never want to get rid of it because it's so fun and the kids use it all the time. But I was saying to Mark, like we have so many children and that bedroom could be way bigger. We could put three kids in one bedroom. Um, but because the, it's basically just an entire playground and then like a little bed in the corner, um, I feel like at some point we're going to have to ditch out on that, um, playground, unfortunately, but anywho, I digress. I'm doing well this week. I am so happy, if you can't tell, to be home. It just feels so good. Yesterday I was cranky. I was cranky yesterday. I definitely felt massive and sluggish and just sort of like, oh, like bleh, um, on the plane. I was just, I was kind of walking like I was 40 weeks pregnant. And I was like, oh my God, I still have 17 weeks until I'm there. I don't, like I can't start the pregnancy bottle now. Like, come on. Um, but that's how it felt. I was like, oh. Uh, I was um, walking around the airport and I was like, my hips are sore. Someone bashed into me, like someone very grumpy sort of like bash right into me. And then I realized that I must be noticeably pregnant now because a woman's like, oh my gosh, are you okay? The baby. And I was like, oh, thank you so much. I'm fine. God, I must be looking really pregnant. Um, so... Yeah, look, it feels really amazing to be home and just we are we are travelers. We travel a lot because of my work. And, you know, there are so many pluses to that, but also downsides in that oftentimes we don't feel like we're just grounded in one place for a long period of time. And we are following the work right now. That's sort of our game plan, which is really nice in the past week. We sort of we figured out right, what's the game plan? We're having more kids. We have different areas that we're focused on. I have a business. i am got your Zen Mama as well with Sarah. And then I have Lovewell with my friends, the Clarks. Um, and then I'm also acting. And Mark's a filmmaker. But we live in two different countries. We live in America and Australia. Like, how are we going to divide our time? What's the plan look like? And I think, you know, we came up with a really fun focus for the next five years we're like all right five years we're still in our prime let's like make money make movies travel 
go to where the work is because by that point, Bodhi will be 12. And um, we figured that we'll get him a school, or we'll get everyone a school here in America as well. Um, I think we're going to try and get uh, go to one of the international schools in Los Angeles. That's also an IB school maybe because um, my kids are in an IB school in Australia. So we're like, look, that's going to be the next five years. It's really unrealistic to think that like while we're in our prime and this is when we're supposed to be making money and saving for our future that we're just going to be like all right peace out and <laughs> we're just going to be like hippies living on the land all vegan and having babies like that's just not a reality there's no uh, sustainability in that if we're not working so we decided look for the next five years let's just hit the ground running we're going to work we're going to work our tushies off the kids will come with us. We'll continue to be a traveling family. We all stick together. And um, <coughs> we have the two bases of Los Angeles and Australia. Um, we'll try not to do any really long, big stretches like what I have done in the past. Like with Wales, we basically had to move there. So we're going to try to avoid jobs like that if we can, unless something insane pops up and we just both decide <coughs> it's good. So this week's been like... I think because we're moving into another transition, all right, now we're leaving Estonia and we're going back to America and then we're here in America for a month before we go back to Australia. Just like those big conversations came up. Um, and also because Mark got his Australian um, permanent residency, which is so exciting. He got the spousal visa. Um, we've been applying for it. Uh, my bestie Cass, who helps us out, she's our logistics queen in our life um she also works for ysm and lovewell she sent us the good news and said he's all been approved uh which is fantastic and it just gives us the freedom to be able to come and go especially during covid times which has been really stressful for our family because half of us are american half of us are australian um kids don't have dual passports yet apart from Bodhi. Isaac obviously doesn't have an Australian passport. So the exemptions and coming to Australia and trying to figure out, like I'm birthing in Australia, but we also can't be away from Isaac for such a prolonged period of time. We need him to come with us. With Mark getting his permanent residency, it means that Isaac automatically is eligible to come to Australia, come and do the quarantine with us. Um, and so, that was just a big relief this week because I, I talked about that last week, how stressy it was feeling, um, especially for Mark. And then on top of it, getting the news about the placenta and um, maybe the issues that were going on there. I've just really made peace with that. I read all your comments. Thank you guys. I read all the comments on um, the video on YouTube as well as uh, the comments that you left on yours and mama. And it was just so beautiful to see so many other people have been through this too. And and everything's been fine. Um, and lots of people say, liberate yourself from the stress, from the anxiety, worrying doesn't help, which is just so true. And I've always lived my life like that. I've always said that to people around me because I'm surrounded by worry warts. Um, and I'm like, what's worrying gonna do? How How is worrying gonna serve you? Um, so I have been feeling really good this week. I'm 23 and a half weeks along now. I've got an appointment in about eight days just to check on her but I'm also you know just very attuned to her movements and um this week for the first time I actually saw her physically kick from the outside of the belly and Susie saw her too just like boost down we, we got a little video of it um and then Mark really has been feeling her much more now and so it's cool she's just like getting more active and she has her little patterns um so it's fantastic. I'm getting really excited to meet her. I'm anticipating the birth. What will that be like? What will that feel like? When will she come? Uh, all those things. How will I feel? Um, I've really sort of prepped myself for the idea that I'm going to have another cervical lip during birth, which is essentially where the cervix gets swollen um, and it can't dilate 100% of the way. So it doesn't quite get to 10 centimeters. It might stay at about nine, nine and a half centimeters and it won't, it just swells up and the baby's head can't descend. So essentially the midwife or your doctor will go up there with a gloved hand and hold open the cervix for you as you're having a contraction and then you have to push the head past their hand. 
that's happened to Sarah, um, I think in all her births, all three of her births, it's happened to me just in my last birth. Uh, and they say that once it's happened once, there's a tendency that that will happen again. So it's just cool. I remember being in the moment with Poet's birth and like knowing that I was having such strong contractions, but I wasn't making any legway. I should have been pushing at that point. I was like, I just know my body so well. And I was like, we're, we're stuck. Something's stuck here. And I'm having these insanely powerful rushes, but I'm not, I, her head's not down. I can feel that I'm not ready to push yet. And um, Julie, my midwife is like, oh, you might have a lip checked. And of course I had a lip. So it'll be interesting this time around going into the birth, knowing this is probably going to happen to me. And um, just sort of pr preparing myself for that. Because I think even though that was only, I only had to do two rushes with her holding it back. It's the most intense part for me. That was the most intense part of the labor. Uh, and just sort of mentally preparing myself. I know it's still 17 or so weeks away. Uh, but wrapping my head around the idea of it. Uh, it has been really, really cool. I've been in such a reflective state the past week, and um, but really buzzy, really excited. Uh, and, and also just coming back, like, yeah, it's a shithole right now in my house, and there's stuff bloody everywhere. And I was saying to Mark, like, we don't, we have a really tiny closet. I look at some of my friends like, on Instagram, who have these, like, big, amazing homes with these, like, insane closets, which are just like walk-in rooms um and I was like oh that's so funny because we have like like a little slither of a closet and I'm trying to fit four people's stuff in the little slither of a closet so I keep having to get rid of things because we have no space like we don't this house is like we have like a sizable home but it's like a tree house. So it's quite like, this is our biggest room in the house. Everything's like kind of compact and wooden and earthy and beautiful, just the way I love it. But it just means that we don't, it's not super modern or anything. So we don't have like a space. We just, we just don't have storage space. Everything we're storing outside on balconies, like bags and random things. And um, we have a storage facility. But then clothes wise, I was like, oh, I'm trying to fit both girls clothes my clothes and my husband's clothes in just like a, a small little walkway like what's happening so yesterday when I was in my jet lagged grumpy mode I was like oh we need a bigger closet how am I meant to fit everyone's stuff and I've already got so many things for this baby that used to be um poets and used to be the boys that I, I was trying to fold and I was like, I've actually got no room. There's just no room to put anything. So I've been storing stuff under the bed. Um, I need to just look up some storage ideas and like where people put things when they don't have a ton of space. Uh, we've got random stuff in random rooms. And um, I just think it makes me feel like, all right, I'm culling another 50% of our stuff. Uh, but I definitely have been getting into nesting mode. I got home yesterday feeling so sort of out of it, really happy to be back, but immediately was like, ooh, this is so ugly. I hate these drawers and I'm going to paint them white and put the baby's clothes in them. Or, oh, actually, no, I'm just going to throw them out. And we need an interior designer. We really need someone to come and help us with our house. Like just like oscillating between all these feelings. And I know it's like my pregnancy brain wanting to nest and wanting everything to be perfect. Um, we set Poet up with like what's kind of like a janky setup in our room because she's so used to now sleeping in her own bed. I'll show you our little like janky setup. This is for her. So we, we just put like a little mattress down and we found this old quilt cover. And I was like, oh, she's, she's just in our room on the ground. Um, and I was like, what do we do? But it, she loved it and she slept there all night. And she loves her big girl bed. So I was like, all right, I think I'm just going to commit to this little Montessori mattress on the floor. And then, um, you know, at some point we can move her into her own room. But it definitely feels so much better having her close by. Uh, but that's it, guys. That's it. And you saw my belly. Um, lots of movement. And just feeling really, feeling really great. All right. I'm sending so much love to you all. I hope you're doing well. And I'll see you next week.
Bye.